Okay. So uh, let us start with the another application of this Euler equation, which we are discussing since last few lectures. So this problem is actually called a soap film. So what? Why soap film? Uh, uh, you will come to know why we um, call this as a soap film. But actually, we need to find out the. We have to find a curve that will connect between the two points x1 and x2. So such that when we rotate that particular curve uh, uh, about this x-axis, it gives us a minimum surface area. So this particular problem is called as a soap film problem because this actually resembles with a soap film. If we tie a soap film to the two different ends, so the area which the soap film will will uh, occupy that will always uh, be a minimum surface area, right? So in order to find out the proof, I will start with so the proof. So we have to find out. We have actually use the we have to use the variation principle to find out this particular curve that will give us a minimum surface area when we rotate that curve about this x-axis. So what I will do, I will just consider two parallel coaxial wire circles. Consider two parallel coaxial wire circles to be connected by to be connected by a surface of minimum area a surface of minimum area that minimum area is actually generated that is generated by revolving a curve y of x about x axis. See what I mean by this. So let me say that if this is my y axis and this is my x axis. <clears throat> this here is y axis and this is my x axis okay so the two parallel coaxial wires i am going to make it like them this right fine so these are the two parallel coaxial wires and let me just draw it first like this Okay, so these are the two points here, x1, y1, and this is another point here, this is x2, y2. Okay, so this is actually a curve, y of x, so we need to rotate. It's like, for example, I have some, uh, uh, some axis, or uh, I rotate something around it. So when I rotate around uh, that particular curve around this, so if this is a y axis, yani I am going to rotate it, this uh, coaxial wire and this coaxial wire. So this is actually a curve that is connected between these two coaxial wires. So if I'm going to rotate it about x, this x-axis, so this is going to rotate like this. This is the, the case I'm uh, considering here. So the curve actually is required to pass through these two points, x1, y1. These are the two fixer points and y2, y. Now the variational problem is to choose the curve y of x so that we have to choose the curve y of x so, so that the area of the resulting surface, that is that, that is this particular area, the area of the resulting surface is minimum. Yani it will cover a minimum surface area. Now, the physical situation corresponding to this particular problem is that of a soap film. For example, um, that is suspended between the two circles. For example, the, uh, if I am going to take a soap film, agar, agar aap, like, like for example, you have some bubble, bubble of a soap film. Like for example, aapne dekha hoga ki when you, uh, agar aap, for example, wo surf, agar aap, jab aap kol, dekhte hai, if you are going to stretch that bubble, it will be like, it will be like this. So that is why we call this particular problem. Sunny, for example, I'm just going to stretch it. It will always try to cover a minimum surface area. That is the reason we called this problem as a 
this uh, soap film problem right so that soap film will always try to attain uh, to acquire a minimum surface area between the two end points between two these two pointers so how we are going to find out the uh, curve y of x so we will use the variational this technique so what i will do i will just choose from this whole area i will just cho choose and single uh, an area element the area element like this is actually a, a two dimension but in, in real it is actually a three dimension is three dimensional so you just choose if i am taking this as a ds element and this uh, portion from this to this i am taking as a y so you just if agar for example you have a this cylindrical shape now cylindrical shape may have for example let us take an example of फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर हम इसकी एग्जाम्पल ले लें कोकम्बर जो हमारे पास है फॉर एग्जाम्पल लर ये वन अगर इफ यू काट वन स्लाइस आई एम जस्ट दिस इज दन स्लाइस ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर दिस कोकम्बर ये खीरा जिसको हम बोलते हैं सो आई एम चूजिंग दिस वन सिंगल एरिया एलिमेंट नाउ वट कुड बी द एरिया ऑफ दिस दिस एरिया एलिमेंट सो दिस हैज ए Uh, this area element is ds but the total area will be like you know the formula so the for for the area element ds for area element ds that is this area element ds so we have this da the area element will be da will be equal to since it's 2 pi 2 pi r h 2 pi r h r is the radius and h is the height so but we have a here Uh, uh, height as y and the uh, this element is ds cylindrical form form me jo so this will be the area el element corresponding to this element ds corresponding to the element ds <coughs> now this distance element <coughs> you know from the last case this distance element is always given by some under root of dx square plus dy square or if i am going to divide it throughout by uh, dx so it will be like 1 plus dy by dx square so it will be y x square raised to power 1 by 2 into dx so then this area element will simply be this d area element will be equal to 2 pi y ds now is 1 plus y x square raised to power 1 by 2 into dx okay so this is the area element now the variational equation correspond to this will be then the variational equation the variational equation the variational equation correspond to this we will we will have this variation as j it will be from integral sum x1 to x2 then 2 pi y 1 plus y x square raised to power 1 by 2 into dx right now this 2 pi is constant you know that so i will just neglect to this 2 pi here and so i will just consider my functional to be like this y into this okay so let me write it here so i will say that my functional functional usually we try to take it like y y x and y so uh, sorry x so what is it like it's like y into 1 plus y x square raised to power 1 by 2 into dx not dx without this so this is my functional now since uh, this function is always a function of three variables like y y x and x but here we don't have any x dependence here now uh, also in the last lecture we talk about the alternate form of the euler equation the alternate form of an euler equation was like partial f by partial x minus d by dx of f minus y x into partial f by partial y x this is this is another form of an euler equation so i am going to use this euler equation to find out the curve okay now look at this so this in sense there is no x dependence so what will be the from this particular equation since f is this so partial f by partial x is simply equal to zero because there is no x involved in this particular function right so now we are left with this part only so then i will say minus okay just omit the minus sign also d by dx of f minus y x into partial f by partial y x will be equal to 0 right this is an euler equation now if you are going to integrate this particular equation you write integrating integrate this integral and differential will get cancel out so i will be having f minus y x into partial f by partial y x 
fine. Now, f, what is f? By the way, f is my, f is simply y into 1 plus yx square raised power 1 by 2 minus yx into, now partial f by partial, I will do it here, then write here, partial f by partial yx. So partial f by partial yx, f simply is y into 1 plus yx square raised to power 1 by 2. So taking the derivative of this with respect to yx, it will be y into 1 by 2 into 1 plus yx square raised to power minus 1 by 2 into yx ka 2yx, right? This now this 2 and 2 will get cancelled out. It will be simply y, yx divided by uh, 1 plus yx square raised to power 1 by 2. If I'm going minus 1 by 2 denominator, maybe now. Okay, so now multiplying uh, this dy by dy, it will simply be equal to y into yx square because this yx is already there. So it will make it y into yx square divided by 1 plus yx square raised to power 1 over 2. This will be equal to 0. Okay, now you can just further simplify it. So how I will simplify, just take the, multiply it will be like y into 1 plus y x square. Okay, this is 1 by 2, 1 by 2, it will be 1. So minus y into y x square will be equal to 0 divided by 1 plus y x square raised to power 1 over 2. Right? Sorry, since we are integrating it here, since we are integrating it here, the, the integrating, so this uh, will be equal to some constant, some constant C1, some constant C1, some constant C1. The constant will appear there. Okay, now, so this will be like the y uh, plus um, y x square, y y x square, minus y, y x square divided by 1 plus y x square raised to power 1 by 2. This will be equal to c1. Now this y x square and y x square will get cancelled out. I will have simply y divided by 1 plus y x square raised to power 1 by 2 will be equal to c1. Okay. Okay. Now I can just uh, scaring it further. So on scaring I will have y square divided by 1 plus y x square will be equal to c1 square because square and root will get cancelled out here. Hmm? Scary. Okay, now what is y x by the way? y x is simply your dy by dx, right? See, I can just further simplify this for the y of x. Uh, you can write it like c1 into 1 plus y x square will be equal to y square. Okay, or this C1 yx square will be equal to y square minus, this is C1, C1 square, right? Or I can write down this as yx square will be equal to, uh, C1 square hona chahiye na? C1 square, yes, C1 square, C1 square. So this will be equal to y square minus c1 square divided by c1 square. Okay, taking the under root on both sides, or you can say that this y of x will be equal to uh, under root of y square minus c1, y square minus c1 square divided by c1. Fine. Okay, so now as I was saying, this uh, yx is actually y dy by dx. So yx inverse here, yx inverse will be equal to simply dx by dy. Any one by yx will be equal to dx by dy. So what will be this equal to from this equation? It will simply be equal to c1 divided by under root of y square minus c1 square. Fine? Okay. Or I can just uh, uh, make the variation in the separable variable. So you can write down this as dx will be equal to c1 divided by under root of y square minus c1 square into dy. Now again integrating. So when you are integrated, this the integration of this dx will simply be equal to x. It will be now. Now the integral of this c1 divided by this 
it is it will always be it is always now c1 is constant 1 divided by is x y square minus aapne ye dekha hoga since yahan pe main likh raha hu integral of 1 divided by uh, under root of x square minus a square it is always given by cos hyperbolic कॉस इनवर्स हाइपरबोलिक एक्स बाई ए नाउ वी डोंट हैव एक्स ये इंटीग्रल आपने सॉल्व किए होंगे नाउ दिस वी डोंट हैव दिस एक्स एंड ए वी हैव वाई एंड सी वन सो दिस विल सिंपली बी इक्वल टू सी वन कॉस इनवर्स हाइपरबोलिक कॉस इनवर्स हाइपरबोलिक वाई बाई सी वन बिकॉज वाई इज माई एक्स हेयर एंड सी वन इज माई ए ओके ओके प्लस सम कॉन्स्टेंट ऑफ इंटीग्रेशन सी टू Okay, now you can solve because we have to solve the particular this Euler equation for this variable y. Now you can just solve it. You can write down this as um, I will write down this as c1 cos inverse hyperbolic y by c1 will be equal to x minus c2, x minus c2. Okay, or I can write down this as cos hyperbolic inverse y by c1 will be equal to x minus c2 divided by c1. What what will be the y? Now y will be now equal to this c1 multiplied by co cos hyperbolic. This will the inverse will become here the cos hyperbolic cos hyperbolic x minus c2 divided by c1. So this is an equation for the curve y of x, which covers a minimum. surface area this is an equation okay now finally if i will choose because we have the end points are given as uh, here since the end points are given x1 y1 for a particular problem we will have we will be having the values of this and this so the c the these constants can always you know that the, the value of the constants are obtained by applying the boundary condition so these are the boundary conditions so the constant c1 and c2 here these constant c1 and c2 they can be obtained or they can be determined by requiring the solution to pass through these two points and x1 y1 and x2 so this so this curve this curve actually covers a minimum surface area when it it is rotated about an x axis again this uh, minimum surface area jo hai it is an uh, actually special case of a centenary revolution centenary revolution catenary revolution or centenary revolution catenary revolution so i don't know whether you know about the catenary revolution yaar jinko hum catenoid bhi bolte hain catenoid aapne dekha hoga aapne dekha hoga bahut sari parks mein is tarah se wo poles lage hote hain poles jo lage hote hain wo poles mein jo aap then we have those wires hai na tum zanjeer hi shasan aap agar aapne hamesha dekha hoga those tum zanjeer se is pattern bon ko na than bon ko na than this pattern tumon wire and park and mazan that so this actually actually they always try to acquire a minimum surface area so this particular problem this minimum surface area jo yahan pe hai it is actually a special case of the centenary revolution ya jisko hum catenoid bolte hain yani if i am going to rotate them about this particular axis they will always try to attain a minimum surface area so that is why we also we call this problem is soap problem because for example if i am going to stretch a soap bubble the soap bubble will be like aap thoda andaaza just imagine in, in your mind ki agar agar aapke paas ek soap bubble hai and if you stretch it see what will happen it will beech mein beech mein ye thoda sa is tarah se compress hoga is tarah se hai for example i am just i cannot show it here but if you are going to take a soap bubble it will always try to attain a minimum surface area so that's why we call this particular problem as a soap 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 film problem okay so we just use the um, this um, what we call as a variational this euler equation the variational principle jo hamare paas hai so we try to find out the what could be the minimum surface area uh, between the two points connected by some Uh, a curve that is rotated which one rotated about an x axis so it always gives us a minimum surface area so the constant is can be obtained by imposing the boundary condition because it is fixed at these two ends so kuch nahi karna we actually consider two coaxial wires then i say that they that they be fixed at two different points this y, this curve as a y axis we just rotate it around some x axis then we choose some area this distance element so the area element will be given by that will be my functional then i use that function in your euler equation we that will give us the that will give us the equation of the curve <clears throat> 
ठीक है सो वी विल फाइंड आउट द कर्व दैट विल गिव अस अ मिनिमम सरफेस एरिया इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट प्रॉब्लम द फॉर एग्जांपल द प्रॉब्लम इज लाइक दिस फॉर इट कुड नॉट बी गिव आस्कर व्हाट सो फिल्म प्रॉब्लम फॉर एग्जांपल इफ यू हैड अ प्रॉब्लम लाइक इन द एग्जामिनेशन यू विल बी आस्कर लाइक फाइंड द कर्व दैट इज अ कनेक्टिव बिटवीन द दीस टू पॉइंट्स व्हिच आर रोटेटेड अबाउट दिस एक्स एक्सिस गिव्स अ मिनिमम सरफेस एरिया ओके so that is it about uh, this was again another important problem of this uh, the variation principle some basics of fundamental problem of this bailer equation now we will just move to one more topic um, is it okay shall i move so you don't have to do much all you need to find out is this area element so once you needed area element so the variation calculus uh, calculation that it is always given by some x1 to x2 this da but da like we have shown in the previous case we were taking only the distance element now we have an area element so area element is just 2 pi this 2 pi y this so 2 pi i am assuming as a constant then by functional will be this then use this in the given this euler equation you will just obtain the curve okay fine <clears throat> now again uh since uh, you uh, have now done the euler equation so i will just extend it to some that is what we called as a more generalized variables more generalized variables more generalized variables actually more generalized value variables mein do cases hain independent variables and the dependent variable first i will consider several dependent variables several dependent variables and the other case will be several independent variables okay now to apply this variational principle or the variational methods to classical mechanics for example because when we talk about the generalized variables we it should come to our mind that we are talking about the classical mechanics because in classical mechanics we usually use these the generalized variables okay so to apply this variational methods to the classical mechanics we need to generalize this euler equation jo euler equation hamare paas hai we will just generalize that particular euler equation to the situations in which there is uh, there are more than one dependent variable agar hamare paas more than one dependent variable hai like for example abhi tak hamare paas dependent variable either we were having the dependent variable as x f the function f is a dependent variable but sometimes we can have the more general this more dependent variables if we have the more dependent variables more than one dependent variable now the then the generalization corresponding to the functional j so the jo hum abhi uh, functional j lete the jo usually we use to take it some from x1 to x2 some function f because it's a generalized variable here f so it is a, this na dependent variable f of y y x and x now instead of a one single variable f if we have the more than one dependent variable what will the euler equation look like so the generalization corresponding to the functional j will take the form like so we will just take it like a j it will be like integral some x1 to x2 okay f of u1 of x u2 of x so on up to un of x then u1 of x u1 of x okay then u2 of x then u3 of x u3 of x so on u n x of x and x into dx okay now these are just simply the like we have u y or we have the x so they will be simply form but what is this u1 of x u are u2 of x u3 of x it's nothing u i of x actually is taking the derivative of d u i with respect to x so it will be now agar for example u1 of x hai so it means that it will be u1 by d u i by dx it will be similarly here u2 u2 by x u3 u4 u5 so it's in general this du by ui x is simply a derivative of this like we were talking about this y of x y of x hum kya lete the d y by dx now instead of y of x we have the ui ui of x so it is simply du i by dx so ui yahan pe hum main le raha hu baaki kuch nahi it's it is the generalization of that very equation okay now from that very case if you remember the euler equation i don't know whether you have studied it at again or not agar aap kisi ne padha hai it will be easy for him to understand that 
सो वी ऑब्टेन द स्टेशनरी वैल्यू दियर बाई कंपेयरिंग द नेबरिंग पार्थर्स जहां पे हम मैंने कहा था फॉर एग्जाम्पल दो पॉइंट मैंने वहां पे लिए थे सो दिस इज वाई ऑफ एक्स सो दियर आई कंसिडर द नेबरिंग पार्थर्स द नेबरिंग पार्थर्स बाई इंट्रोड्यूसिंग सम वेरिएशन एंड सम स्केल फैक्टर सो देन इंस्टेड ऑफ वाई ऑफ एक्स दियर वाई ऑफ एक्स x kya uh, tha y of x uh, will be simply some y of x 0 and uh, alpha eta of x similarly i will just apply here so this ui which is a function of uh, x and alpha will now be equal to ui x 0 plus alpha eta i of x where i can take the values like 1 2 so on up to n what is this eta i of x it is it is the same jo hum nita x wahan pe hain the smallest variation the smallest variation which we are going to make it from the actual path and alpha is just a scale magnitude of the scale it is called as a scale factor okay so then we need to find out the unknown path this unknown path the unknown path ui x 0 then what is the uske baad hum kya condition usme karte hain you just go through that particular lecture it is just a generalization to that particular लेक्चर आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू वहां पे मैंने आई हैव डिस्कस दैट इन अ वेरी स्टेप बाय स्टेप बट हियर आई एम यूजिंग द सेम कांसेप्ट टू जनरलाइज दैट पर्टिकुलर केस दैट आइलर इक्वेशन केस फॉर फॉर द दिस मोर इंडिपेंडेंट मोर डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल्स ओके देन वी चूज द कंडीशन दैट बाय डिफरेंशिएटिंग द जे दिस फंक्शनल जे विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द अल्फा एंड सेटिंग इट टू द जीरो जहां पे मैंने डी जे बाय डी अल्फा एट अल्फा इक्वल टू जीरो कहा था लाइक we say that this is analogous to the differential in differential equations where we put dy by dx at x is equal to 0 to find the minimum value to find out the stationary value so by differentiating this j this functional jo j yahan pe hai with respect to alpha and setting the condition that j should be set stationary so what could then we will it will lead to an integral x1 to x2 integral x1 to x2 some summation over i partial f by partial ui into eta i minus sorry plus partial f by partial ui x eta i x into dx is equal to 0 this is the this is the what condition this is this dj by d alpha at alpha equal to 0 will be like this particular case okay now if you remember in order to solve this particular equation what we did there we just uh, integrate this second term this second term by parts we integrate it by parts then we just substitute in the given equation so this partial f by partial u x into nita x is integrated to a parts the integrand part jo yahan pe aayega that vanish like it vanish in the euler equation case so it will vanish and we will be left with the only one one single part like for example agar aap iska integrate by parts karoge it will be like partial f by partial u i into integral this eta i x prime eta i x prime so eta i x prime minus integral of eta i x prime into partial f by partial into dx do jo integral wala jo second term isme aayegi that will vanish because we have just keeping this fixed because nita i uh, this nita i of x uh, is equal to 0 and eta i of x1 is equal to 0 and eta i of x2 is equal to 0 keeping the end point is fixed so when the second part when the second term the integral part in this term will vanish so we will be left with this integral x1 to x2 now this partial f by partial ui it will remain as such partial ui it will remain as such minus because we will have the second term here minus d by dx of minus d by dx of now what is it partial f by partial u i x into nita i x into nita i x so but that nita i x jo aapka hai wo yahan pe bhi hai is term mein bhi hai so that i am going to nita i so that i am going to write here nita i into dx will be equal to 0 okay now you know that this nita i are arbitrary and independent of one another so nita i means nita 1 nita 2 nita 3 so they are arbitrary and they are always independent of one another each of the term in the sum will vanish so each of the term this uh, arbitrary they, they are independent of one another so each of the term in the sum will vanish this is actually the summation over i so each of the term in the summation will vanish independently so the, if the each of the term in the su summation will vanish that means so if this is uh, zero that means this into this should be equal to zero so they uh, they vanish independently that means this particular term which is there in the summation it should be equal to zero so i will just put it like 
So then this particular, this case in the summation, so I will have partial F by partial UI minus D by DX of partial F by partial UIX should be equal to zero, where I can take the values like one, two, so on up to N. And this is Euler equation for several dependent variables. It's very similar, but agar aap isko compare karoge, how is it different from this? So it's not different from the general Euler equation for a one, one independent variable, which is partial F by partial X minus D by DY of partial F by partial y x d by d this is partial f by partial y huh? partial f by partial x minus partial f by par d by dx yes sir. partial f by partial x partial f sorry partial f by partial x minus d by dx of partial f by partial y x this is equal to zero. So this is partially by because now we have we're taking it several dependent with uix. This is d by dx are partially up by partial one happy yx later. So we have this. So yeah, he me happy care. If you if you just compare these two, see we have y as ui of x or x as a y y and fx, then this is as a y x, and this is the another will be the x. So this is very similar. So this is an Euler equation for the several dependent variables okay so we discussed two things here one is one of the application of the Euler equation that is a soap film we need to determine the minimum surface area connected by curve between when rotated through x-axis and this uh, the generalization of this Euler equation to uh, several dependent variables now we have we will do one more thing that is the generalization to now we will use this particular thing, um, this general Euler equation for the several dependent variables. I will just obtain, use this particular principle to obtain the Hamilton's principle. The Hamilton's principle, you know that what is Hamilton's principle? Lagrangian equation of motion. So Lagrangian's equation of motion, we find out from we find from the, this principle, yani Hamilton's principle, just go home both him. So anyways, we will do that in the next uh, meeting, in the next lecture. Uh, I'm going to stop here. So if you have now any questions or any queries regarding, if you do not understand anything anywhere, just let me know so that I will explain it. Okay, I do not explain. I will just add one point that I do not go into the detail of this particular thing. Why? Because we have done this, uh, already in the Euler equation, I have discussed, we have discussed that in the detail, how we obtained all these things. So like, for example, this very stuff, like this very stuff, wherein we are just uh, taking the some nearest path. In the, so we define it by you, that is a UI as a function of X and alpha. But there we I discussed it in detail. So this actually is a generalization to that particular case. Go through that Euler equation again, then you just go through this lecture, you will find you can easily, um, I mean, this is much easier if you understand the Euler equation fully, then this, there is not, you can do it for dependent variables, you can do it for the independent variables, whatever the type of a variables you have, you can, you will always be able to write the Euler equation for any of the cases, right? Okay, so if you have now any question or any query, you can ask it. You can unmute yourself. 